Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show here. Nick and I are here talking more Big Brother. The, the game is over. Big Brother 17 is over, but it doesn't stop for us. It because all those interesting, awesome house guests that were inside the house that we couldn't talk to are now outside. Look, they were only fortified by several guards, we a tried wall, to get in there. a chasm, and a house. Look, it, you, you make it sound like it was tough to get in there. Well, it's a little easier now, and we are very lucky to be joined by Vanessa. Woo! Incredible, Hi incredible player inside the house. Thank you. We can't wait to talk to you about all of season 17. So awesome to have you on the show here, Vanessa. Thanks for having me, guys. Absolutely. So I'm just going to dive right into Get right it. into okay. it, Nick. All right. So okay. people obviously know you're a poker player. How did you go from playing mm. poker to being on Big Brother? Like, how did that come about? It's actually a, like not that far of a jump. You know, being a poker player, what initially drew me to that is that I'm a game enthusiast. Um, when I was an undergrad at Duke, I actually studied game theory, um, wrote my honors thesis, honors thesis on game theory. And for those who don't know, game theory is um, the study of strategic decision making. And what that is, is, is taking real world situations involving people and reducing it to models and mathematics in an attempt to optimize decisions and behavior. And so in studying that, I've always kind of like been totally obsessed with any game. And it just turns out the one that I could make a living at was poker. Uh, and in you know being involved in poker and being a poker player, uh, having an opportunity to be on a show like Big Brother uh, is the sort of challenge. I would guarantee you almost any poker player would jump that. And um, it was everything I thought it would be and more. It, it took a, how hard I thought poker was and to the next level times a thousand. It, it challenges you on every level, uh, strategically, emotionally, physically, mentally, your sanity, all of it. And, um, and you, you are really, really tested in what I think is the best game I've ever come across. And so it's, it's more that I'm a game enthusiast and that's what drew me to, to Big Brother. Were you a fan of this show before going on yeah. season 17? Yeah. Yeah, I really like um I like reality type TV and uh and game oriented TV. So Survivor, uh Big Brother uh were shows that I really liked uh for the strategic aspect of it. Now, now Vanessa, when somebody goes all in at the poker table and then you knock them out, do you cry at the poker no. table as well? Or no. <laughs> Understand, which I love you for that question. So, but here's what people don't get: like in poker, like I could go home and emotionally process at home in the privacy of my own home by myself. Because it turned, as it turns out, I'm a really ugly crier. Oh, watching that is painful. <laughs> and so, it just you know, when you're on Big Brother, you're there 24 hours a day. They get it all. They get the logical side of me, um, the strategist, um, and then they get the part of me that's the very human part of me that has a heart, that has feelings about everything that goes down, whether it's I feel bad about what I'm having to do to another player, I feel bad about you know people not understanding me, I feel bad about maybe how some other people are treating other, there's a lot of different things and I have a big heart and emotionally processing things uh, is something that I just decided to be very real about on the show and let people see me 100% through and through the, the way they don't get to see me when they just watch me at a poker table and I have my poker face on. Uh, in my other life. So now the uh, the tears weren't strategic then, I guess. That was all real because because the, you know, like the tears helped you in the game a lot of time. It so kind of helped here's you reconnect. The thing. Okay, so I've been getting this question a lot and it's it's a hard question to answer yes or no. Were they here's what it comes down to. The tears were real. And that doesn't mean that there couldn't have been strategy in allowing myself to be so vulnerable and emotionally available to other people. Because it's my belief that Given the things that I've been through uh, in my life, in my 32 years, I've been through a lot more than a lot of 32-year-olds. I've dealt with people very close to me dying. Um, a lot of things that have taught me – wait, Bear, don't do that. Sorry, my dog's, like, going to knock something over. Um, don't do that. <laughs> Stop it. Um, the, uh, no, so having been through all the things, that one of the things that I've learned about people is that – Human beings connect when we allow ourselves to be emotionally available. Instead of having our poker face on, which is something I'm very used to doing at the poker table, um, in the Big Brother house, I allowed myself to take my poker face off, be my real self through and through, and my hope was in doing so, I would create real connections with other people that would come in handy later in the game when I needed them to do certain things strategically, and I needed them to trust me more maybe than the next guy, and I think it worked. It doesn't mean that those connections weren't real. They were, and a lot of them have survived the house, um, but while I was in there, 
my goal was, you know what, I'm already doing, taking the biggest risk of my life by coming out about my sexuality on a public stage. I would say coming into Big Brother, 99% of my poker fans didn't know that I was in a gay relationship. And so taking that risk and coming out on that forum about that, I was like, ah, I don't really have any much else to lose. I'm just going to be very real all the way around. And what you saw is what you get. And it, it's embarrassing for me to watch sometimes because I'm like, Ugh, who wants to see themselves like that? But, you know, it was real. And it did help me. I did have good connections with people. And at the end of the day, people trusted me maybe when they shouldn't have been in the game or whatever. But it came down to that I actually had out of the game real personal connections with others. This actually sounded like the intro class for every single acting class I ever took my entire life. It was like... Really? <laughs> open your, yeah, it's like open yourself up uh, emotionally and then yeah. you can establish Vulnerable. real connections and then you use those connections essentially like for the performance. You know yeah. what I mean? Like That's not, exactly, that's what it was. Yes. Yeah, and so it's like it becomes a tool essentially, not necessarily like, they're not fake, they're real emotions, but you are, you're creating like a different painting with those emotions. But um, speaking of tears, okay, lots of tears, <laughs> lots of tears, Vanessa. How do you feel about the way that Big Brother ended up? The, oh, you mean the, oh, the, the finale? Correct. Oh, I mean, look, okay. I will say of all the 17 house guests, if someone had to bubble the money, as we say in poker, bubbling the money is getting just one outside the money, then it was, should have been me because I could, I'm probably most well-trained to handle it. Um, you know, yeah, it totally sucked. Like, obviously, like, I would have loved to be 50 or $500,000 more in my pocket right now. However, that being said, I'm, I'm a realist and I understand that there's an element of risk in it and there's certainly a lot out of my control in the game. I did everything I could at every turn to make the best decision that I could with the information I had at that time. I didn't play a perfect game, no one can, uh, but I have no regrets about the way I played the game. By and large, I've no, I tried to be a good person while making good strategic decisions. And in the end, it wasn't meant to be. And I can live with that. You know, I live a blessed life all the way around. Uh, and, you know, if I ever had the opportunity to go back on the show, I would do it again. Call me a glutton for punishment or whatever. But I still had a blast. Like, it was totally everything, everything that the challenge, it, it was everything that you could hope for in being a game lover and wanting a challenge. And I got that. It, I didn't conquer it. Totally, and I would have loved to, but I gave it my best shot, and so I can't really have any regrets, and uh, I still live a great life, so I'm not gonna sit here and have a pity party for myself. Yeah, it's not like you went like two weeks and then got evicted. Ah, that'd be ridiculous. That would just be the worst case scenario. <laughs> <laughs> no, which I actually feel for you. When I watched your season, I was totally all about moving company and uh, couldn't have wait to see where you were gonna bring that, and uh, yeah, you got prematurely cut short. Yeah. Uh, well, you, yeah, Vanessa, you were disappointed. I was also disappointed as well. It was an absolute pleasure to watch you this season. You were an assassin. You probably used um, fan blood on Vanessa. my hands more oh, than I think you. I've heard any other season, but you had so much blood on your hands because you literally okay. got out every single cast member. So I was going to ask you maybe some of your best moves you think that you made and then maybe a couple moves that you now regret because you ended up third. Yeah. Uh, all right. Okay. And I've, and people have asked me that about what I regret now that I, and it's the funny thing is I don't know if I would have done anything different. I don't know if it were possible to get to final three where all, where both of the other people would take me. I had a, it in a spot where one of the other two would take me and, um, and where I was playing for the opportunity to take myself, which was a pretty good spot to be in. Liz was in a great spot because she could, if I won, I was going to take her. If Steve won, he was going to take her. And if she won, she's obviously taking herself. I don't know, given how much I'd done in the game that I could ever have been in a spot like that. And I was in just one spot lower, one notch lower in terms of spot I would like to be in. So I don't know whether I would have actually done anything differently, but favorite moves. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, I think that uh, first of all, deciding to target Jason uh, was a pretty big move uh, in terms of taking the structure of the house as it existed when I started my HOH and kind of blowing things up and redrawing lines. Uh, Coming into that HOH, uh, I was sitting um, in between two alliances. In um, on the one hot side, I had uh, Six Sense. On the other side, I had Freaks and Geeks. And um, and then on the other side of the house, of course, was the Gremlins slash Goblins, whatever you want to call them. Um, and they they actually kind of vote wise, depending on who was HOH, could have the numbers to control the way things would go 
in future HOHs. So my goal in my HOH was how do I affect as much destruction to their side of the house with just one eviction? And it came down to Jason. Because if you think about it from a helicopter perspective in terms of modeling what the other side of the house looked like, Jason was the guy that was able to bridge two corners of that opposite side. Because you had you had Jackie over here who had a relationship with Jason. You had Jackie and Becky over here. And then you have James and Meg over here. And Jason was the bridge between them that made them kind of a one, two, three, four, five person voting block. And once you take him out of the equation, you've got a, two scattered deucems uh, do some that doesn't work two sims and you can uh you know what i'm saying the duo hashtag do some hashtag <laughs> why watching? do i do these things you it was duo and two sims kind of got like yeah they it's, went, a time I'm, it's late in my day i need coffee um yeah but anyway so for the flow so, chart you know like the, so, the draw down like it's like and <laughs> put on the lab coat vanessa puts the lab coat on he's got the laser pointer it's like, like how you're talking about this is like seriously like I'm enjoying this so much right now as a strategist, like as like a big brother, like someone who does this type of thing in, in, in the day to day. I just want to say continue, please. Oh, okay. Well, well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. But all right. So yeah, so taking Jason out, um, my goal was to break apart the structure of the other side of the house and give my side of the house a dominating numbers advantage so that two things would happen. Either one, um, we had a lot of the stronger competitors, so we were the favorite to win future HOHs. But if we didn't win HOHs, um, I also had it set up, this is like kind of like my second move that I, that I like, um, I had it set up that I wouldn't be the first one to be targeted from my side of the house if my side of the house wasn't in power. And the way I did that was I aligned purposely with bigger targets than myself in showmances on both sides, twins, um, and even a Steve who's known to be uh, a, a strong, um, like a big brother super fan. And at that point in the game, he was seen as more of a threat than me. People didn't really see me as a threat strategically at that phase of the game. And so in the beginning, I kind of created on my side an overlapping umbrella of alliances where I was in the middle. Uh, and, and then when I, the, when I was HOH and I targeted Jason, I managed to break up the structure of the other side of the house, which really ended up catapulting my side of the house to the late middle stages of the game. This, the the third the, the other move that I think was pretty important um, obviously flipping the vote when Becky put me up on the block um, you know she she put me up as the target and um, I for the first 24 hours was genuinely grieving that like it like it did suck but while I was sitting there in bed like being sad about it um, I was coming up with a plan of how am I going to flip this vote and and then I did it in a matter of three conversations. And um, it was, you know, I talked to James outside, James in the bathroom, and then I talked to James, Meg, and Jackie in the have not room. And after those three conversations, I solidified their votes and managed to flip the, the house on what Becky's original intentions were. Um, so that was obviously a pretty critical move for my own ability to survive in the house. Um, and I mean, I don't know, there's a lot of, I mean, I could go on and on, but I'm going to- <laughs> Every <laughs> week, Vanessa, you did something, so I'm yeah. Going to, I'm going to blog about it. I'm actually going to blog about week to week what I was, what was going on in my head strategically. Um, and uh, yeah, so if people follow me on Twitter at Vanessa Russo, find out more about that starting next week. Awesome. I just felt like I like downloaded like chapter one of Vanessa. Like I, I want them all. I want all <laughs> of the chapters. Now I was going to say, do you- are you this strategic in real life? Like outside oh. of the Big Brother house, like in your career, in your, in, like in your day to day? Like, is this I mean, like- well, so in poker, yes. But the, in poker, you have to, that's the name of the game, it's strategy. But no, I really, um, that was one of the biggest lear learning lessons for me in my life about uh, learning how to separate uh, like work, business and pleasure basically. And uh, it took me a while in the beginning of my career, I was playing a lot of poker and it was hard for me to take that strategic hat off and learn how to like, just like let loose and have fun. But going back to school to become a music producer and a DJ and uh, doing everything I do in music now, that really helps me kind of get out of the game mindset. And um, it's a way that I really connect with other people. Um, and no, like not in my personal life. In my personal life, I'm a really, uh, I'm all about that once in a lifetime experience. I'm a very like fun loving, passionate person um, and all about like relationships with people and heart. In fact, I often do things that I know strategically are probably bad for me uh, in my personal life just because I think it's fun and a chance to do something for a once in a lifetime opportunity type of thing. And so, yeah, I'm probably not strategic in my real life very much at all, but I was gonna in say my you're job, a human, yeah. so that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. 
experience. And so to kind of extend that question, after you were so good on Big Brother this season, going back to, to your girlfriend, was she like, can I trust you? <laughs> oh, we had that was, was conversation. I... Oh, man. Yeah. yeah she, was like, she was like, Vanessa. She's like, Vanessa. She's like, I can't imitate her accent very well. Um, she, you know, she's French, French Canadian. Um, she's like, Vanessa, like, uh, what is this? She's like, do I need to worry? <laughs> she's like, I just, she told me that she told herself when she was watching she started to like have a panic attack and be like, do I need to worry? And then she was like, wait, no. Cause she also was reminding herself that she sees me talking about how much I miss her. That was real. That's all real. You can't fake that. Like I fucking missed the hell out of her. Pardon my F word. But like, I really did. And you couldn't, and I couldn't hide it. And so, you know, she, she knows how much I love her. And, yeah. uh, and so she trusts in that. And it's like, what am I going to be strategic about in my relationship? Like, like, getting out of doing the dishes like i yeah. mean like what's the goal what am i winning you see what i'm saying there is oh, strategy to that just so you know there. i'm i'm the master at that by the way ah. um she's actually in the other room but um the way you're getting out of the dishes you, the, I'm you just let it mouth. pile up enough to where it becomes a problem for someone else <laughs> and, and then it's and then it's not you hope it's not a metaphor for the relationship <laughs> hopefully you're just talking about dishes here and then they just do it because they just can't take it anymore. Yeah, I'm, that's, I, I might be doing that without even knowing that I'm being strategic then. No. But yes. Yeah, so I mean, no, I'm not like evil. No, I like totally have like a, Mel and I have a very real connection. And um, no, I'm never strategic with her. But she definitely had a second where she was scared about it and talked to me about it. And, but then settled on the fact that she knows we love each other. And I mean, she asked me to marry her. And I said, yes, we're, we're so happy. That was awesome. So. That's, yeah, congratulations. Like, yes, congratulations. That Thank is you. huge Thank news. And, and kind of piggybacking off of all that news as well, is like, how are you adjusting to life outside of Big Brother? Hold on. Do you hear Maverick crying because she wants food? Come here, baby. We're going to give you food in a second, honey. Because she's really hungry right now. I'm adjusting. <laughs> Sorry, I have to give my dog some love because I wasn't here for 100 days and he missed me. You got to make up um, for it. <laughs> but uh, how am I adjusting? I'm adjusting well. It's, you know... There were some weird like parts of it where I was like, uh, well, first of all, I don't ever really look at my phone as much as I used to. I kind of forget about it for hours at a time, which I think is a healthy change after Big Brother. It's, it's good to go a while without looking at your phone. It's bad that like sometimes I take too long to get back to people, I think. But on the other hand, I'm, I don't, I'm not as attached to the hip to my phone, which is <laughs> Um, sorry. Hey, Bear, stop. Maverick's hung. Oh, it's Bear. Both wow. of them. They're, they're, they, it's dinner time. They're like tackling uh -oh. me for food. Um, and so, yeah. And let's see what else. Uh, I'm loving my privacy. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Like I'm in real life overload. All my friends are saying that I'm, I look like I'm like super, super happy, like high on lifestyle. And, uh, it, it is a little bit of that. Like there were so many aspects. I'm sorry. She's literally trying to climb on my lap. She's <laughs> not a lap dog. But Maverick, not right now, baby. Um, and so, you know, there was, I mean, this is so wrong. I'm really sorry. It's completely no. inappropriate. <laughs> but me, um, it's great. Um, it's, bring, it's bring your dog to work day. That's here on exactly our show, what, is it what it is. is. Because, yeah. Had, yeah. Hey, Bear, stop it. Um, and so, so, yeah, so it's, I'm like, uh, like, oh my God, cars in the street. And like, I'm in, I'm in that kind of place where it's like, you, I was taking everything for granted, like we all do. And then when you go into a house for a hundred days and deprived of all that stimulation of real life, um, you come back and you appreciate it more. And I certainly do. And I'm like, in a, I'm in a good place right now. A really good place energy wise, all the way around. Yeah. And I asked Austin this question. I want to ask the same question to you, Vanessa, about how you thought you would be perceived when the show finished up and then how you feel like you're being perceived after the show finished up. Uh, okay. So First, like I went on the show to play a game and I, I didn't go on there to like entertain people. Um, I don't think I'm very entertaining. Like I don't, um, I don't think I'm really funny. Like I was never going for America's player. Like that was never for me. I, I was there to like win the strategic game. And I pretty much like wrote myself off as like a not topic for um, America's player or anything like that. And I didn't really spend any time thinking about how I would be received. I was hoping if nothing else, people would see that I tried hard to be a good human being in the house while also being a good strategist. Um, I will say that I was blown away with the positive response that I've had. Um, I mean, obviously you're going to have the comments here and there, uh, which I've addressed for the most part. And I'm used to that from poker and it's really, it's, it's fine. It comes, comes with, you know, doing things on television. Uh, but I would say I'm totally blown away by the, the, as a game player, for me, the biggest compliment you can give me is that I played a great game and yeah. I didn't win. So the next best thing is a consolation prize would be, you know, having people say that, 
that I played a great game and, and I've gotten a lot of that and I'm very grateful for it and humbled by it. You can't have thought that you would have had the impact this season that you had, right? Uh, prior to season 17. I mean, you, you really, as a viewer, you were pretty instrumental every single week. I can't imagine that you thought that would be the case going into the show. No. Um, yeah. Like I, I knew you can see it. Like if you watch me in the beginning, I, my plan was to like sit back for the first two, three weeks, which I did. And start, oh, whoa, Maverick, <laughs> Vanessa, come back to us. Sorry. Oh. Maverick, stop it. Um, so my, my plan was to, to like kind of stay out of the strategic crosshairs, um, or at least like making any kind of big moves for the first couple of weeks, which, which I did that Maverick stay. Um, and then, and then once I won the first HOH from there on to, to start playing the game and I did. And, and from there, there, like on, I guess I just, what I never planned for was not having a number two and not having a number two in the game meant that every week I had to break shit up. I had to make sure the structure, because if I left the structure as it was intact, I was at the low end of the totem pole for everyone. I wasn't going to survive much longer. I was the next week's target. So I had to, whether I was HOH or one of my allies was HOH or one of my allies wasn't HOH, and I had to go negotiate some kind of deal with uh, someone on the other side of the house. I had to do the best that I could with the tools that I had to break up the structure as it was week after week, because I never had one person's true loyalty. And I didn't expect that going in. I thought that I'm actually usually someone who can connect with people and um, at least find one person to like have like a deep connection with. And I did have connections with people. It's not that. It's just that most of the ones I had the deepest connections with fell in love or like had a showman's. And so like, and I can't blame them. If like Mel were there, I would have been more loyal to her than them as well. So I can't even blame them, you know, but you know, I was closest really to like Shelly or Austin or Liz and, and all these people, you know, were in love with someone else or basically. And so that, that, that meant that, oh, Maverick, sorry. <laughs> that meant that she's like getting antsy. Okay. Maverick down, 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 down. Go on, go on. You guys are going to wait. You're going to wait. I'm going to feed you afterwards. Okay. You're going to wait. No, 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 no. You're not coming up anymore because you're knocking over the phone. Okay. So anyways, so yeah, so I couldn't plan for that. And, and it was because it was born of that. The amount of moves that I made in the game were born of necessity. I wouldn't have made that many moves. Cause I recognize that as you make moves, you increase the target above your head. And I wouldn't have been as much of a move maker if I didn't feel that I needed to. And I, I felt that I needed to because of the way the house was structured and the way that I kind of like was always on the fringes of that structure. So now that you're, out of the house and you played like i think everybody in america knew how well you played i mean if you're you played if, the best game of anybody by you, far away if, yeah if you were going for that you nailed it you easily got the big brother 17 best player like no question there's not a single person who watches big brother that wouldn't agree with me on that um but so what's next though what's what's after a big brother for you i mean my real life <laughs> but it's you know look uh I love games, so if the opportunity came up to do another like game format like Big Brother, would I be down? Definitely. Beyond that, uh, I mean, poker is the way that I make my primary income, uh, but mu music really is my passion and my heart. My, my girlfriend and I, or my fiance and I, I'm um, getting used to that one. The, uh, my fiance and I are um, launching a DJ duo. We're looking to call it uh, Girl on Girl. It's a little bit provocative, but <laughs> it works. And, uh, and so um, we're, we're gonna be launching it in the very near future, and we're gonna try to make it work. And, I know how competitive the music industry is. I'm a realist and if it doesn't work and we can't, you know, make that the, the bread and butter kind of moneymaker, um, then I'll always have poker to fall back on. Uh, and I'm open-minded to whatever opportunities come my way. I mean, if you had asked me 10 years ago where I would be now, I certainly couldn't have outlined for you my life path. It's been a really bizarro journey. And so I think one of the things that makes me me is that I'm someone who's willing to take up rather odd looking occupation choices and uh, give things a try that maybe a lot of people would be a little too risk averse to try. Um, I'm all about the challenge and kind of like living life, living life coloring outside the lines. So uh, we'll see what doors open, I guess. Yeah, I had a question about uh, finale night for you, Vanessa. I was I was thinking you were going to vote for Steve because I like yeah. personally I think with Steve and Liz, I think Steve I played, the, played the better game. And I was just going to kind of ask you, to, to talk a little bit about how you decided that vote and sure. how you decided okay. to vote for this. Okay, so I've gotten this question a lot and, um, and, and I stand by my, my decision and here's what it comes down to. Uh, I knew Steve and Liz both very well by that point in the game. I had played side by side with them for the entire game and um, 
my feeling was based on how the information set that Steve came into the game with and the level of expertise of big brother that he came into in with, I had this expectation of him. I had another expectation level for Liz based on her being a recruit. She didn't know much about big brother. She only learned about it a few months before. And then I compared them on how they performed based on expectation. Uh, Liz outperformed expectation for me consistently throughout the show. Like there were so many times when I told her in, sorry about that. When I told her that, um, like in my HOH room, she would say things and I'd be like, like things that I hadn't even thought of strategically. I don't think she's really given as much credit as she is due. Uh, like I brought up earlier, you know, she got to final three in a spot where she was guaranteed to go to final two. That's a pretty amazing thing. I mean, Steve was there. He had to win. If Steve didn't win in the finals, he wasn't going to final two. Um, she, she was going no matter what. And so that's a pretty big feather in her cap strategically in my view. Um, she also really, she, she had a great social game. She did a lot of things right that I don't think people really give her enough credit for. Um, when it came to Steve, so I had this expectation and he, he performed most of the time and sometimes he exceeded. There were times though that he fell short, which I couldn't ignore. Like one of the most notable was he was going to, as HOH, put Liz and Julia up on the block and keep Austin off the block, which was a huge mistake in my opinion, because if Austin won the veto, which he was one of the most likely of the three to win a veto competition, he could take down one of the twins and force either Johnny McAry to go up on the block. And then they have the boats to send one of us home and keep the three of them in the house going into final four, which would have been terrible. And so Steve would have done that if, if it had not been for me stepping in and proving to him basically pleading with him and building the case for why he, Austin needed to be on the block next to Liz and Julia needed to be the one off the block. Cause she, I viewed that based on competition performance, she was the least likely to win the veto. And, um, and that, and that is essentially what saved our side of the house in terms of not having to go to final four with a, with a threesome as strong as the Aust twins. And so that was a mistake in my, in my view um, that I really couldn't overlook. And so it came down to that. And on top of it, I had to deal with Liz that, I knew I would be fighting an uphill battle with the jury if I ever ended up against Steve in the final two. So I made a deal with Liz, listen, if either of us are in the final, in the jury, and we'll vote for the other. We, we both agreed, and I decided to stick to it. So that's, that's it in a nutshell. Great, yeah. So, well, uh, do you have another question? Uh, you know, go ahead first. Gotcha, yeah. I, was, I was gonna ask you, where can people find you? Like, uh, your, your Twitter handle, your Instagram handle, your website, like, all the projects you're working on. Uh, yeah, so um, my biggest social media thing, I'm, I'm mostly on Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash Vanessa Russo, R-O-U-S-S-O. And then um, I resurrected my Instagram uh, this week, um, not putting stuff up on a daily basis. There's some cute clips of my dogs up on there, me training them and our reunion after I got back from Big Brother. And so people can check out my Instagram, Vanessa Russo as well. Uh, and I'm newly on Periscope, um, trying to figure out that technology, like, I'm kind of bad at it right now, but making it work. Uh, so yeah, so Periscope, though, I have done one so far and I'll be doing more. Um, and uh, is that it? Oh, music. If people want to listen to my music, soundcloud.com slash Lady Maverick and uh, mixcloud.com slash Vanessa Russo. If you like Deep House, listen to the Sunday Funday mix. If you like dance music, listen to the I Can Twerk mix. And, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah, it was a pleasure watching you all season, Vanessa. You you really were the engine of Big Brother 17 100%. that really made well, it. Thank you for the compliment. And uh, so I was going to ask you, and this this could be a hard question for you, but can you objectively rank your performance against some of the other notable Big Brother? Oh, what? Uh, <laughs> no. Because <laughs> you're, you know, you're in the conversation. I might be biased, but no, you're in the I'm conversation. Also, so. I'm also my biggest critic, so I'm going to underrate myself a lot. Like, there, I all, I always see my flaws. Like, you don't even know. Like, when I make music, for instance, it, ta it takes me, like, a year of perfecting it before I'm willing to put it online. Like, that's how much of a perfectionist I am. All I see are the flaws. So, wow. Like, so, where to start? When know. you look back on, on your game, then, are you seeing are you I seeing see, more oh, yeah. flaws than you're really you think seeing I think successes? That, you think I could look back and think I played perfectly? Oh my goodness, no. Um, I mean, I played the best that I could in the moment making, sorry, my phone keeps doing crazy things, but I, I played the best that I could in the moment making the decisions I could with the info I had, but did I play perfectly? Certainly not. Um, are there things I would do differently? Yes, I would say one of the biggest things I would do differently is um, it was so evident that I was there to play the game. I mean, you even had... James make a joke about it that like Vanessa wasn't there to play pop ball, lay by the pool. She was there to play a game. And that's true. However, it wouldn't have hurt me to like play a little more pop ball and lay by the pool. Like 
my social game could have been a little better. So um, I'm going to definitely take a cue from that. And like, you know, moving forward, if I were ever to have another opportunity, like in something like that, I think that uh, social game is an area that I could definitely improve. Um, let's see what else. Uh, I could I could obviously improve um, certain types of competition skills. Uh, and um, yeah, there, I've learned a lot, like looking back. I mean, I know that I was, I've always been very careful about words that I use and things like that. Um, I think that people were a little more put off by the word deal than I could have ever imagined anyone being put off by the word deal. So I might re-strategize that. Um, you know, it, it maybe makes me come off as too much of a wheeler dealer type of thing, which puts people off and makes them less willing to make deals with you. Um, in the end, I think that most people stuck to the deals they made with me. So it worked in my favor, but, um, that was like a criticism that, that I, that I stuck with the word, you know, maybe, I don't know. There's a lot, but in terms of particular <laughs> players, I have a, I have a lot of, uh, a lot of respect for, uh, quite a few p players from seasons past. And, um, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I would love the challenge of being able to play with them. And it's just, it's hard to know. I'm not one of those people like in poker, you learn this really early. Like a lot of people in poker are like, Oh, I'm the best. And they have that kind of attitude. And, but they get that beat out of them so quickly. Cause like, poker's brutal like you learn that results speak and so for me you know I would love the opportunity to play with some of these great players and then see how I would do against them I'm not one of those people to like be like oh I would beat so and so like I don't know first of all um I would you know give it my best shot and but I'm also I'm very aware of the fact that like and I don't need to be like the best in the world at it like I need to do the best that I can in the moment uh, if it picks, if I pick up a few extra dollars in the process, that's great. Ah, but the, I'm, I'm giving a, <laughs> a, a, a comment I know. through your house and like, <laughs> that's what it sounded like. No, no, it's because you don't see them, but they're down here fiddling with the wire of my microphone and it keeps pulling the phone down. I'm sorry. They're in Maverick or they're trying to pull out the wires. <laughs> they like literally you, are. You know, like, I think, I think we should probably well, really let, want food. Probably <laughs> let Vanessa go to feed Baron Maverick before she's attacked by them. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I hope that answers your question. I know you guys wanted something like a little more specific. I just, I, I don't know. That's a new question. I don't have like an answer specifically to it, like in terms of what players and how to rank myself. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I'm I mean, happy it, with the game I played. I'll, I'll leave you with that. Like I'm, right. I'm happy with the game I played. I don't think I played perfectly. Of course I would fix things if I could go back. Hindsight is always 2020, but I know that I gave it everything I've got. And by and large, I have no regrets. I would definitely yeah. put you in the winner circle, and I would not want to play Big Brother with you. <laughs> but it'd be fun, though. Come on, moving company. I know. Hey, it would be fun, but I don't think I'd last very long. I just put that put that out there. Not necessarily true. Not necessarily true. You never know. Yeah. Well, we'll see. But you guys anyways, never got to see me play with a close number two. If I'd had a close number true. two, it would have been a totally different game. So I'm just going to throw that out Hopefully there. Hopefully we'll see you back in the house at some I point. So. That would be fun. I think what so. What if you and Vanessa got oh my that? God. That would be, be crazy. crazy. It'd be fantastic. <laughs> You know, we could bring Bear and Maverick in there. We'll have a maybe I can get in. We'll have a five-person alliance. But but the thing is, she'll have her dog, so that's that's, that's a true. type There's loyalty three. There. That's yeah. a type three. We'll have to figure that out. Loyalty so there. She's gonna pick us off so quickly. It's true. It's not gonna be. We're already doomed. It's, it's yeah. not even bothered. Yeah. But thank um, you so much. For yes, on, thank Vanessa. you so much, Vanessa. For sure. It was a pleasure watching you all summer. Yes. It was very. It was you made the summer interesting. Yes. You really did drive the show. So glad I could do that. Thank yeah. you for making Big Brother 17 a strategy-oriented show once again. For sure. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. Thank you guys for having me on the show. Absolutely. Thanks, Vanessa. All right. Talk later. Bye. All right, bye. If you like this video, click here to subscribe. New videos every week.